How did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam purify mu'mineen? For sure, Rasulullah was not purifying mu'mineen by saying, you know, you can do whatever you like. It's against the whole thing. Rasulullah was purifying people by identifying the main sources of impurity. Main sources of? Impurity. You know, like pollution, germs. If you are a doctor and you want to help people to be healthy, so you should tell them what are the germs, what are the, you know, disease to avoid. Rasulullah was identifying the sources of illness first and giving them the best treatment. Among all the things that make our soul ill or you know pollute our soul among everything what is the most destructive thing or what is the basis of everything else hope dunya you can mention many many things but a clever person always tries to go to the principles to the foundations you know, you can mention tens of things, but the foundation for most, if not all, our problems is Hubbud Dunya. You know this beautiful hadith, Hubbud Dunya Ra'asu Kull Khatiyah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, that excessive love for Dunya or attachment to Dunya is the foundation for every wrong. Don't you see how a person who is obsessed with dunya loves something that Allah doesn't like? Allah doesn't like dunya, this type of dunya. But this person, for him, dunya is the most important thing. What mistake, what wrong is more criminal than this? Allah says dunya is mata'un ghalil, is not important. And for me, dunya has become the most important thing. This is a crime. Yeah? Imagine you are working for police and for you, the criminals are your best friends. <laughs> and you know, crime is your most favorite thing. So what type of, you know, police officer you can be? Hope dunya is the root, is the basis, is the foundation for all the wrong things. So now, if Rasulullah is to purify us, what should he do? He should help us get rid of hope dunya. How does Rasulullah help us? to get rid of dunya. First of all, by he himself being a good example of not being attached to dunya. Okay? And secondly, by asking us to do things that would help us to be detached. The most important thing here is to give money. When you are attached to something, you have to give it so that you can gradually be detached. This is not me, this is Quran. You know, Allah says in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 103. Khuzmin sadaqah. O oh, Rasulullah, take charity from their possessions. Why? We always think we give charity because there are poor people. We give charity because we want to do something for the community, for example. So we always think about the people who receive. We think those who receive are the main beneficiary. 
and there are needs to be met. But this is not the right approach. That is secondary. The main beneficiary is the one who gives. Imagine, you know, just as an example, imagine if you have a type of illness that you have excess of blood. They say you should give some blood. Who is going to benefit from that blood is the secondary issue. But you have to get rid of blood because you have too much blood. Okay? Maybe a time comes that they can take cholesterol from us and use it somewhere. But that is the second issue. You have to get rid of excess of cholesterol. Allah says sadaqa is not mainly for the poor. They are going to benefit, but sadaqa is mainly for you to purify yourself. By taking charity from them, you purify them, you clean them. And this is why in the time of Imam Zaman, when Imam's government is established and justice is all over the world, it's very difficult for people to find poor, to give them sadaqah. So they look hard to find someone, something for which they can give money, because they know the value of sadaqah. You know, if we just look at the poor people, so I should be happy that no one is asking for money. Alhamdulillah, no one is asking for money. But if you know the benefit of sadaqah, you look for somewhere to give money. Yeah, because you want to purify yourself. <clears throat> it's two different attitudes to charity. One attitude is that, okay, there are needy people and we cannot, as a moment, live, you know, when we know there are needy people. We cannot, you know, have our own life and enjoy when we are, there are needy people. This is one approach. <coughs> but the other approach is, no matter whether they are needy or not, I need to give money. خُزْمَنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَهْ تُطَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا You purify them and clean them with this. وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهَا Also, send salutation to them. Send your blessings to them. صَلِّ صَلَوَاتِ صَلَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَهْ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ Your blessing is bringing comfort and tranquility to them, sukun to them. So, Rasulullah was purifying people and one major part of this process was to ask them to give money. <coughs> In chapter 92, verse 18, Allah says, this is Surah Allah, الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَالَهُ يَتَزَكَّى وَمَا لَأَحَدًا عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْرَ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى The one who gives his money, يَتَزَكَّى Seeking purity. Why he is giving his money? يَتَزَكَّى Because he wants to. Purity. Zakat means purity. Or for example, we have Qad Aflahaman Tazakka. Yeah, Qad Aflahaman Tazakka. Or in chapter 35, verse 18, Allah says, Waman Tazakka fa innama yatazakka li nafsihi. The one who seeks purity is seeking purity for himself. Not for the poor. So, in Islam, let us summarize what we said. In Islam, what we have to do is to first resist against our temptations, to control our soul. Doing things only when we have already checked that this is okay. Saying things when we have checked 
this is okay. So there must be a control here. You know, like for example, you have a person controlling what is going outside from the storage. It's not that everyone can come in and take you know, something and, or bring something here. We should stand at the gate of our heart. Don't let anything come in or goes out unless it is checked. We should stand at the gate of our mouth. Don't let anything to come out unless we have checked. Our hand, our legs, everything, ears, everything must have a person like a controller that checks everything right can come go and go. Everything wrong has to be stopped. But then the next step we said is to change. To change the soul. And make the soul a soul that has no longer desires for bad things. A soul that doesn't need to be controlled. If it needs uh, control, it's in the opposite direction. You know, there are people who need to be controlled not because they have bad desires. There are people that have so much of good desires that you have to tell them, please have some rest. Why you are putting too much pressure on yourself? You know, like Rasulullah, Allah says, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُونَ نَفْسَكَ You are, you know, putting too much pressure on yourself. There are people, if they need control, they need control in this way. They say, oh, please, you know, a little bit, you know, ease it. Because you are exhausting yourself. So the soul has to be changed and be transformed. This is what we call purification. Tazkiyah to nafs. And one of the best ways of purification of the soul is to get rid of hubbud dunya by charity work. Prayer is very important, but prayer is not enough. All types of ibadah, okay, are important. But you cannot say, I do ibadah, but don't give money. Please don't ask me for money. I just do ibadah. It doesn't work. Or you say, don't ask me for ibadah. I give money. I am a rich person. So how much prayer costs? Instead of prayer, I give money. No. We need both. Prayer and zakat. These are two pillars. You know, Allah says in Surah Bayyana. You know, Chapter 98, verse 5. They are not asked to do anything except to worship God, purifying their faith for Him, and to establish prayer, to give alms. This is the upright religion. Islam. Without Salat, cannot stand on its feet. Islam without charity also cannot stand on its feet. Whether it is Islam of a person or Islam of a community, it has to have both. And one of the things that I am very much uh, thinking about is that I think in our community, we have, mashallah, people who do charity work. But it seems that it has not become an essential part of the community. It's mostly personal. You know, we plan everything for ibadah as a community. But when it comes to charity, it seems that we don't act as a community. We have individuals who do charity. But if we do it as a community, it's more compatible with Islamic model and it can have greater impact on the larger society when they see Islamic centers and mosques you know, do so much of charity. But now because we are doing individual, it's not visible. People think that we are only concerned about, you know, our own, you know, religious issues or our own welfare. They don't see how much Muslims are doing charity work. But there are other people who do, you know, little charity, but everyone in the world knows about what they do. So, 
It's very important to make charity essential part of our community work. Because this is Quran. يُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُعْتُ الزَّكَاةِ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ The upright religion is this. Maybe some of our, for example, children, the best way to bring them to community and to center, to mosque, is to involve them in charity work. For some reason, maybe for example, for them, you know, saying, you know, prayer, you know, you know, lect attending lectures, maybe it's difficult for them. <laughs> These type of people, but can be good in charity work. And in this way, you can bring them to the community and gradually, then they will be good for Salat and, you know, all these religious activities. Because we think charity work is also part of Islam. So, this is the... Uh, significance of purification and uh, resisting against hubbud dunya by giving charity. Inshallah, we'll continue discussion after a short break.